In this video, I would like to discuss how interior design can influence your habits. The way I want to do this is to talk about four essential ideas. Number one is why home design has the power to influence habits. It's not always obvious at first glance. Number two is home design strategies to make good habits easy. Number three is home design strategies to make bad habits hard. And finally, number four is home design strategies that can make habits stick for a long time. So let's get into it. Why does our home design have the power to impact habits? I want you to take notice of your home environment. What kind of actions does it encourage you to do? Let's take your living room, for example. Upon entering, what is the first thing you're inclined to do? Maybe it's taking a seat on the sofa. And once seated, what do you often find yourself doing next? Could it be reaching for the remote to play some TV? If your room is arranged in a way that promotes lounging and TV watching, it shouldn't be a surprise if that becomes your primary activity there. Our surroundings play a pivotal role in directing our attention and actions. They not only support current habits, but they help shape new ones. In the words of James Clear, writer of the book Atomic Habits, Despite our unique personalities, certain behaviors tend to arise again and again under certain environmental conditions. In church, people tend to talk in whispers. On a dark street, people act wary and guarded. The most common form of change is not internal, but external. We are changed by the world around us. Every habit is context dependent. So now that we understand the relationship between space and our habits, Let's look at some design strategies that make good habits easy. Have you ever walked into your kitchen, spotted a cookie on the kitchen counter, and found yourself reaching for it, even if you weren't particularly hungry or craving it? This happens because various items in our surroundings are triggers for behaviors. We see something and we act a certain way. So how can we fuse our home design with the power to make us act differently? You do that by asking yourself one question. What do I need to look at every day that will nudge me towards repeating this habit? It really is that simple. Whatever we see more of, we do more of. Let me give you an example. Let's say you wanted to get into the habit of painting more often. What would you have to surround yourself with to trigger you to paint daily? Perhaps it's setting up a small painting workspace where all your tools and canvases can be laid out. Maybe it's about filling your bookcase with books teaching you techniques or showing you what great artists have been able to achieve. Perhaps it's surrounding yourself with beautiful art made by other creatives or by you in the past. Now, of course, you can also fill your digital space with painting tutorials and art wallpapers and so on. The triggers can expand further than your physical space. But if you live in this ecosystem of items that constantly remind you of painting, and considering that painting is something you deeply desire to get into, do you think you'll be doing a little bit more painting than if these reminders were not there? So the trick is to find those items that will encourage you to do more of something and place them in high visibility places. Now, how do you make items highly visible in interior design? Here are some ideas. You can make use of open shelves. Items that are placed on open shelves and at eye level are much more likely to act as triggers for your habits. You can use open shelves in the kitchen to display healthy foods, reminding you to opt for nutritional choices. But you can also prominently display books, religious artifacts, art supplies, or exercise equipment to prompt their regular use. This psychological trick is also used by grocery stores, where the items placed at eye level cost a lot more than those placed higher or lower because the items at eye level are also bought more frequently. Our walls can also be used to display habit triggers. These could be photos of places you want to travel to, the kind of art you want to make, or photography of people you want to become like. Motivational quotes and vision boards all play a similar role to keep specific habits top of mind and to trigger more action towards our desired outcomes. Studies can also capture our attention. For example, an oversized TV will make us watch more TV and a large bookshelf will encourage a reading habit. The location also matters. Items placed in the center of the room 
generally capture much more attention than items placed on the side. For example, placing a fireplace in the center of the room will make spending evenings by the fireplace a more reoccurring activity in our life. The triggers aren't just limited to specific items, they can expand to whole contexts. For example, we associate the bedroom with the habit of sleeping, the bathroom with washing, the kitchen with cooking, the cinema with watching movies, and the bar with drinking alcohol. Over time, our habits become associated with an entire context, with a room, an area, a place, rather than just one item. This is why designating a specific area to a particular activity reinforces habit formation and minimizes distractions. The advantage here is that you can decorate an entire area with habit triggers. This means that a room dedicated to exercise will be filled with gym gear and maybe photos of athletes and all sorts of items necessary for activity. You will not see a single chair. Everything in that room will speak of exercise. Now, if you can't dedicate an entire room to a specific activity, you can also designate a corner of a room or a smaller area towards a habit. For example, you can create a so-called cloth an office in a closet, or it can be a very small one. Or perhaps a table is a fold-down wall desk opening and closing as the situation presents itself. The important thing is here to dedicate a small area in your home to your habit. Doing that makes the habit more likely to stick and makes it easier to focus on the activities they are designated for. By the way, if you like these ideas, do check the video description. I have a bunch more online classes and worksheets on similar topics to help you create a home that will make you happier, healthier, and more creative. Also, if you use my link to sign up for Skillshare, you can get your first month for free. Now that we understand how to make good habits happen, let's see some home design strategies to make bad habits hard. Now, if we want to make the triggers of good habits as visible as possible, we should definitely work towards minimizing or removing entirely the triggers from our environment that are conducive to bad habits. So for example, if you want to watch less TV, consider replacing your large TV with a much smaller one, which you would place in a corner of the room. It should not be in the center of the room and definitely not opposite to the couch. That way you can watch 20 minutes of news in the morning, but it would not occupy your entire afternoon. The second way to make a bad habit more difficult to stick with is to place more barriers towards exercising it. So if the TV is not even in the living room, but in the basement behind closed doors, and to watch TV you would have to go to the basement, open the cabinet doors, and plug every cable the excitement of watching TV would be lower. Of course, removing the TV from your home entirely would probably help the most in this situation. So the smaller, less accessible you make the items that enable bad habits, the easier it will be to eliminate them. Finally, I need to talk about home design strategies that will make your habits stick for a long time. And I would like to illustrate this with a personal story. I have tried to do more yoga this year I have my yoga mat in a visible place and it would take me no time at all to roll it out and do some yoga. But do I do it? No, I don't. And I think the reason is that it feels more like a chore to me than something pleasurable. On the other hand, I really enjoy walking. I walk 5 to 8 kilometers multiple times a week. Why do I like it so much? For multiple reasons. One, because I don't have to wear sports pants. My normal city clothes are fine. I can walk as fast or as slow as I want. I can listen to a podcast or an audiobook while I walk. And the contact with daylight always lifts my mood. During my walk, I have many ideas for classes or videos, so I return home in a better mood and feeling inspired. And so walking is much more rewarding to me than yoga, which is why walking has stuck with me for a very long time. So I can sit here and tell you all about the ways your environment can nudge you towards a certain habit. But if you will not find a way to develop a positive emotion in relationship to that habit, the design will fail to work and its power will fade over time. 
This means that the design of your home is not a magic wand. It can't make you do anything. You still have the power to choose what action you will ultimately take. And if you don't find a way to enjoy the habit over time, you will probably not stick with it. So here are a couple of ways you can add some pleasure or positive emotions to the design of your space that will help you enjoy your habits more. Number one, you can enhance the tactile experience. This means that if you create a cozy corner, you can double down on the pillows and covers and have an overall feeling of coziness and comfort during your reading habit. You might add a hot chocolate or a tea to that and suddenly your reading habit becomes a self-nurturing ritual. Number two, you might deliberately choose to splurge and make your home office beautiful with inspiring art and a beautiful desk and lush plants so that every time you go there to exercise your creative habit, you have a sense of joy. You feel a little different than you do in other corners of the house. You could take advantage of a large window with a beautiful view towards a garden. Placing your table in front of it means that you will experience the sense of pleasure you feel when you are looking at nature out the window. You can also make use of fragrances. Scent can trigger deep emotional memories and boost our mood. For example, familiar scents like vanilla or cinnamon might bring back childhood memories of our grandma or family gatherings. But scent can also be the cue necessary to exercise a certain habit. For example, the smell of coffee is associated with work and might trigger intense focus. You can also light a candle during your meditation habit. After a while, your body begins to associate the scent of the candle with a sense of relaxation to the point that the mere scent alone will trigger the sense of relaxation without having to meditate every time. So these are some ideas of how you can add pleasure and comfort to your habit, but ultimately, based on the habit you want to create, you have to find your own way to generate that positive emotion. All right, if you guys like the video, I hope you will consider subscribing. And if you enjoy videos where I discuss the relationship between space and psychology, you might like my video, The Optimist's Home Design. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.